What's going on, everybody? My name is Anthony Servino, and this is another episode of the Sports Betting Edge podcast brought to you by OddsJam.com. You can follow me on social media at The Real NFL Guru. You can follow the show at OddsJam. We can be found at all of the top social media and podcast platforms. Uh, we are coming to you live right now on Twitch. Uh, we are going to be syndicated on YouTube and in podcast format. So be sure, especially you YouTube viewers, uh, to hit the subscribe button and hit the alert icon so you could be notified anytime Odds Jam drops a new video. And this goes for you Twitch and podcast uh, listeners as well. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button. All of these engagements trigger the algorithm. Uh, so we can keep growing and we can keep uh, being put in front of new viewers. Uh, so these little things that you can do to help us out. Uh, and what I'm going to do today, I'm going to talk about the Sunday night football matchup between the Dallas Cowboys uh, and the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, and really, this line, it opened up uh, with the Cowboys uh, get it, giving three points to the Vikings and the over under or actually I'm sorry with the Vikings getting one point and the over under total at 53 but with the news of Dak Prescott which we will get into uh, in a few minutes the line has moved towards the Vikings now the Vikings are getting three points and the total dropped uh, down to 51 and a half points now, let's get to Dak Prescott, right? Because this is the pressing news that everybody wants to talk about. And all week, we've heard about this calf injury that he reportedly suffered on the final play of the overtime win at New England two weeks ago. There was the obvious bye week for the Dallas Cowboys. And coming off the bye, this calf injury was a little bit more significant since uh, he Dak Prescott really uh, had erratic practice participation Cooper Rush took first team reps and we know Dak has been here for a while uh he knows the Kellen Moore system extremely well he doesn't really need the first team reps to go and start this game uh the reports from late this week were saying we'd know by Saturday if Dak Prescott was going to start on Sunday night however monkey wrench as you know we should probably should have anticipated that Dak Prescott now, and this is per ESPN's Ed Werder, longtime NFL reporter, longtime Dallas Cowboys reporter, that the Cowboys are going to make Dak Prescott's playing status a true game time decision. Uh, and right now he's listed as questionable. Now, if it was going to be Cooper Rush, and I'm going off gut feeling here, I think we would know about it already. The fact that this is going to be a game time call, I, I think they want the Vikings to over prepare for Cooper Rush, maybe try to under prepare for Dak Prescott, and boom, we're going to see Dak Prescott on Sunday night. I also saw a report from earlier in the week that if Dak Prescott indeed dresses and starts, that the Cowboys uh, would ultimately dress three quarterbacks. More indications that Dak Prescott's going to play. And per Dak, if this was a playoff game, that he'd be out there. Uh, so if he's medically cleared, which I believe he will be, I, I do think we're going to see Dak because it doesn't mean, okay, you start Dak and if anything happens, you can always pull him out of the game and then turn to Cooper Rush. The fact that I, I know Dallas plays in the NFC East, uh, but this is the NFL. Any team can get hot at any time. Right now, the Cowboys have one loss. All of a sudden, if Dak doesn't play and the Minnesota Vikings win, which is the heavy expectation that they will win, uh, sans Dak Prescott, then all of a sudden the Cowboys are at two losses and the Giants are getting healthier, and, and you know how this can go. Uh, anybody can get hot at any time. Uh, to me, the New York Giants are the second-best team in that division. They obviously play those same NFC East teams, and anything can happen moving forward. I wouldn't play games from the Dallas Cowboys. I want one of those top seeds uh, in the NFC come playoff time. I'm going to try to get Dak Prescott out there uh, on Sunday Night Football, and again, I believe he will ultimately ultimately play. Uh, so I would jump on this line. If you're with me and you believe Dak Prescott will go on Sunday night, I would jump on this line now. And I'm going to use the tools at Odds Jam. And I'm the little screen. I'm the guy in the little screen. The tools at Odds Jam, they're going to be on the bigger screen uh, on the page right now. And I am at the Odds Jam uh, odds 
section of their website. And if you go, you see it's the first option. You click on it. You pick the sport you want. Obviously, we're football. We scroll down past all the college matchups. There seems like there's thousands of them. And I'm obviously exaggerating, but there's a lot. Um, so here we get to Cowboys, Minnesota Vikings, and the Cowboys right now on the money line. They're the dogs. Uh, the Odds Jam Perfect line, which is the pinnacle sports book line, the sharpest sports book in the world, uh, plus 132 for the Dallas Cowboys, minus 146 for the Minnesota Vikings. So even without Dak Prescott, this is a fairly close matchup. And if you want to take the Cowboys money line because you think Dak's going to play or you think there's enough talent on this team and this defense has improved enough and maybe, you know, you're reading into Kirk Cousins' primetime record, which is deceiving. Kirk Cousins statistically plays really well in primetime. His record does not reflect it. He's been better in the past few years. Uh, but again, his overall record is not the greatest in primetime spots. So if you think the Dallas Cowboys can win this game with or without Dak Prescott, the best bet right now is that Caesar Sportsbook, you can get it at plus 140 odds. And like you hear uh, every other creator over at Odds Jam say, like, why would you place the Cowboys to win? Why would you place this bet at plus 130 odds at Twin Spires when you can get uh, 10 points better at plus 140 at Caesars? It makes no sense. You are leaving money on the table. When you're leaving money on the table, how the hell are you going to be a profitable sports better in the long run? And this is why the tools at Odds Jam are so important. They will make you a better and more profitable sports better in the long run and i'm not a math guy the creators of odds jam they're a lot smarter than i am they put these tools together this is a mathematical edge in sports betting i'm like you guys i'm a user of the tools at odds jam and i have profited north of thirty five hundred dollars now since week one of the nfl uh, I, i'm wagering nfl i'm wagering soccer i don't know anything about soccer but i believe in the odds jam process and if you work the process and, you know, I'll go through it in a little bit. There's little calculators with the positive EV betting, the plus EV betting that tells you how much of your bankroll you should be wagering, the win percentage. Uh, and you put a little bit of handicapping behind these plus EV bets and you're going to become very, very profitable. Now you have to deal with the ebbs and flows. Nothing's a lock. Nothing's a guarantee in life, or especially in sports. But if you follow the process and the system, you will be profitable at the end of the day or at the end of the month at the end of the year um so again the best bet for the dallas cowboys over at caesars plus 140 now if you want to smash the minnesota vikings because you remember last year without dak prescott the team fell apart in dallas um they were flat despite all the talent they couldn't get out of their own way nine times out of ten uh then you want to hammer down a minnesota viking so the odds jam perfect line minus 146 uh you can get the let's see where's the play here um it seems like the odds jam perfect line is the play now, what does that mean? We want to find the next best odds for the Minnesota Vikings, which would be win bet at minus uh, 149, uh, it looks like. And that's if you believe the Minnesota Vikings will win. Now, do the Cowboys actually have a shot without Dak Prescott? What are the primary differences from last year's Cowboys to this year's Cowboys? Well, uh, from the get-go last season, you remember that Travis Frederick, their all-world center, retired. Uh, in the preseason. Uh, so they had Tyler uh, Biotish and I, I believe Looney uh, as, you know, platooning their starting center job. Uh, what's more, we also saw Lael Collins. He missed the entire season. Tyron Smith missed all but I think one game, like the season opener or the second game. He was done. We saw injuries to uh, Zach Martin throughout the year. So that Dallas offensive line, they were gashed. They were down to like their practice squad tackles. That is not the case this year. This offensive line is healthy. And when this offensive line is healthy, any competent quarterback can pick a defense apart behind it, especially when Ezekiel Elliott and Tony Pollard are running the ball the way they are. Uh, even Zeke didn't look good last year behind that offensive line. Uh, also on the defensive side of the ball, 
uh, they they brought over uh, Dan Quinn, who might have might not have been the best head coach in the world. Not all coordinators can be a head coach. Not all college coaches can be an NFL head coach. Head coach. It, it's a different job. It's different responsibilities. Uh, Qu- Quinn won Super Bowl. As a defensive coordinator, he put together some of the best defenses we've ever seen in NFL history. He comes over to Dallas in a very short time period. Trayvon Diggs is picking off passes at will. Uh, Anthony Brown, their other corner, is playing outstanding football. These linebackers are playing terrific football, especially Micah Parsons, who might be the front runner for Rookie of the Year. This Dallas defense has really stepped up their night and day difference. So this Dallas team is a lot better than it was last year without Dak Prescott. Uh, Defensively, Dallas rankings, um, they are giving up the fifth fewest rushing yards. They were one of the worst teams in the NFL in terms of giving up rushing yards. Uh, They do give up some points, which is expected because when you're a team like Dallas who are playing with the lead, there's a lot of garbage time production. So this Dallas defense is a little bit better than what the stat sheet suggests. Um, And they are also number five in takeaway uh, turnover ratio. Uh, so I'm, I'm pushing the chips in on the Dallas Cowboys because I believe Dak's going to play. Uh, so again, the best money line bet is Dallas plus 140 at Caesars right now. Taking a look at this injury report, uh, you know, really the big ones, Dak Prescott on Dallas's end, you know, Diggs probable. We still see those designations in some spots. He's going to be up. Uh, I don't think we see Michael Gallup uh, but really, outside of that, there are no big-time injuries uh, for the Dallas Cowboys. Brent Urban, uh, defensive end, might be the biggest one. Let's see. Yeah, there's really nothing else. And and Collins, obviously, serving that suspension uh, that he tried fighting. On the Vikings end, you know, uh, same thing here. Not a lot. Now, Michael Pierce is ruled out already with an elbow injury, uh, a run stopper, uh, stop gap, interior defensive lineman. That's going to be a loss. That's going to be tough without Michael Pierce, who played a long time with the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, that's a pretty big loss for a Dallas team that's probably going to heavily heavily, heavily lean on the run, perhaps more than they have all season long. Uh, Patrick Peterson's not going to play. Suffered a hamstring injury a couple of weeks ago. He is out indefinitely. Another uh, significant loss for this Minnesota Vikings team. Uh, So a couple of key injuries on both sides. On on the Vikings end, uh, defensively uh, is really where they're hurting Sands Peterson and Michael Pierce. Let's go to the point spread. Let's take a look again at this point at, at this odd jam screen and right next to money line. And you see, I'm gonna, you know, my mouse is, is doing circles right now. These are all the 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 you know markets that you can wager on for this game that odds jam supports with their tools. So you click on point spread and we go down and we scroll down and we see the main line is highlighted on the left. Again, Vikings getting three uh, or giving three Dallas getting three points. And it, let's say if you like, if you, maybe if you think the Cowboys are going to win, but you don't trust the money line, uh, you could take them at plus three odds and the best bet here uh fox bet fan duel uh bet mgm Bergata, looks like uh, what is it win bet and the score all at minus 110 so even the odds makers even the book makers believe this is a pretty even game with or without dak prescott uh, so, I, again, I like Dallas to win. I, I, I think they can get the job done. Uh, is it going to be a, a tougher road without Dak? Yes, but again, if you believe he's going to play, I would jump on this now because the second there's any type of announcement hinting that Dak's going to play, these odds are going to trend back to Dallas's side, and they're going to become the favorites once again. And things can happen overnight. Like, I cover the overnight news first thing in the morning at, like, 4.30 a.m., 5 a.m., and we see... This player expected to play from Schefter. This person not expected to play from Schefter. That person expected to play from Rappaport. This person's going to have a, a, a limited workload per Rappaport. And we could see a hint on Dak overnight, and boom, these lines are going to change rapidly. So I would jump on them right now, again, if you believe the Dallas Cowboys are going to have their franchise quarterback on Sunday Night Football. Um. 
let's go let's see what do we want to look at next let's take a look at some uh at some player props and what i'm going to do now i'm going to go over to betting tools and the odd jam page i basically live on their positive ev page there are risk-free arbitrage opportunities as well uh which i do here and there but i really have been hammering home the plus ev bets uh you could uh filter out player props uh you can keep them in if you want i like the player props myself uh they're a little bit more tricky, but I feel like I have a, a handicapping edge with a lot of the sports, especially lately basketball and obviously the NFL. So let's filter down. Let's go to, to tomorrow's date. Let's keep scrolling down. Let's find this uh, Sunday night football game. Let's see if there's any plus EV opportunities. Terrific feature on Odds Jam uh, with the refresh button. The Odds Jam odds are updated uh, in real time. So you got to get on these bets fast because you know you could see something you like and if you're dilly-dallying you get to your sports book or the sports book you need to place this at too late guess what you're going to miss out on the terrific plus ev betting opportunity so you got to act fast uh same thing if you don't see anything you like you hit that refresh button and boom you might see something that just pops up that wasn't there five minutes ago so you got to be really really quick so again we're going to scroll down we're going to find this game tomorrow there's a lot of terrific nfl opportunities and myself and and randall k bets uh, another terrific odds jam creator will be live tomorrow morning with our last minute best bets and player props uh, i'm not sure what time yet but i will post it on my twitter at the real nfl guru when i do know so stay tuned for that um and let's go down here tomorrow 8 20 vikings cowboys now we have a total plus ev bet and it's an alternate total because remember what did i say that it was uh 51 and a half uh so we have an alternate minus 135 at bet mgm and Bergada. they share odds the odds jam perfect line minus 162 the under 54 and a half even if that goes i i think the under is a nice play so i you know this is something that would certainly make now there's some days i'm i'm limited at bet mgm and Bergada. uh some days i can put bets some days they limit me down to like two bucks which, you know, it is what it is. It happens to everybody. If you're profitable, uh, you hear this a lot. If you listen to the content at Odds Jam, uh, just about every creator says, hey, I'm limited here and there. Um, so that is one that I would take uh, a 4.17% positive expected value betting opportunity uh, for this Sunday week eight NFL nightcap game. Dallas, Minnesota. Again, BetMGM, Bergada, under 54 and a half alternate total. Uh, again, you know, here's another one 3.79% plus EV return, minus 120 at the same aforementioned sports books, minus 41 at uh, Ajam Perfect Line, which is really pinnacle, the sharpest sports book in the world, under 53 and a half. Uh, so you can get slightly better odds if you believe they're going to go under and you believe they can go under at 53 and a half, which is a point less uh than the 54 and a half we just talked about uh and, and here's another one the, there, there's a lot of these totals uh and depending on uh what you like you know here's a 54 and a 53 and, and, and you know you basically take what you like or what you think uh or what you think is going to happen uh but the player props is what i really want to look at and there's only one here right now and it's on Dalvin Cook's total receptions. The play is the over 3.62% plus EV return. Uh, Pinnacle has this at minus 127. Uh, FanDuel is the best play here at minus 102. The over under three and a half Dalvin Cook uh, receptions. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go research Dalvin Cook. And let's see his target share. Let's see his reception totals. And, and let's see uh, the odds of this hitting. Now, Dalvin Cook, the past couple of games, we know he's a superior pass catcher, one of the better pass catching backs in the NFL. He's had two games this season where he had seven and six targets, respectively. 
Um, now, uh, in week one was his most productive day as a receiver, six for 43 on seven targets. The rest of the games, now remember, he dealt with injuries, uh, was in and out of games, splitting time with Alexander Madison. He didn't play two games. So Dalvin Cook, actually, as a receiver, hasn't really returned the value that you would expect. Uh, outside of that week one matchup where he went six for 43, he had a two for 17, two for 10, and a two for three. Minnesota had the bye last week, as did the Dallas Cowboys. Dalvin Cook, healthier uh, than he has been in recent games. I think this is going to be a matchup where Dalvin Cook gets back going as a receiver out of the backfield. So I would smash this over three and a half receptions at minus 102 odds. And again, it's not like, you know, he might have only had uh, hit the over in week one where he had the seven targets, but back in week four, he saw six targets. So we know Kirk Cousins is going to target him. Let's look at what uh, Dalvin Cook has done to the Dallas Cowboys historically. And, and Dalvin Cook, one of the better uh, dual threat running backs in the NFL. We know he brings it. Um, and Dalvin Cook, in his career historically, uh, he's had reception totals. Now, he's only played two games against the Cowboys. Um most recently, November 22nd of 2020, and then November 10th, 2019. Uh, in those matchups, five receptions for 45 yards, seven receptions for 86. I mean, even rushing totals, a buck 15, 97, uh, a touchdown in each. So you're going to smash the over here on Dalvin Cook. I, I think Dalvin's going to pop. Uh, against the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, you know, this is going to be a showcase of two of the best running backs in the NFL uh, tomorrow night. Uh, so we're going to open this screen back up, and we're going to see all these different um, different markets you can wager on for this football game. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to go look at receiving yards. Because, again, I, I said it, uh, you know, a few seconds ago, Dalvin Cook has not returned value as a pass catcher Outside of week one, it's going to happen tomorrow night. Now, I'm going to go look at Dalvin Cook's uh, receiving yard totals, uh, and they're set at 25 and a half, 24 and a half, 23 and a half, uh, depending on what sports book, depending on what market. So let's look at the 23 and a half right now. And, and what did I say? When Dalvin Cook in week one, uh, when he had that really terrific game as a receiver, he put up 43 yards. So if he's getting the receptions, he's going to return the yardage. Um so if you want to play it safe, like the minus 120 odds for 23 and a half, what I'm going to do, I'm so bullish um, on Dalvin Cook. Fox Bet has plus 100 odds uh, for Dalvin Cook to go over 25 and a half receiving yards. Um, two more yards and 23 and a half, uh, and you go from minus 120 odds at most books to plus 100. Uh, if you think he's going to catch over three and a half passes, you have to believe he's going to go over 25 and a half yards. Dalvin Cook, one of the more efficient backs in the NFL. And again, historically, Dalvin Cook brings it five for 45 last year, seven for 86 as a receiver in 2019. I'm all over Dalvin Cook, uh, over... Uh, reception totals over receiving yards. Now, what are some of the other props? Not a ton of plus EV betting opportunities, but it doesn't mean that odds jam doesn't have value because this page that we're looking at right now, it tells you the markets. It tells you, and it even highlights the best spots to make these bets. So let's go to Ezekiel Elliott rushing yard total. Um, let's see. Uh, the 74 yards. Let's see. Uh, let's go down. Let's scroll down. Let's find uh, Ezekiel Elliott. Now, I don't even see a market here for Ezekiel Elliott. And this could mean or, or this could be because of the fact that we don't know Dak's status. So a lot of these sports books might pull. Um, you know, the receiving totals, but again, I'm looking for rushing. So let's look for player rushing yards. And here we are. Here is Ezekiel Elliott. And um, if we're looking at 74, we have 74 and a half. We have 73 and a half, 75 and a half. With or without Dak Prescott in this game, Dallas Cowboys are going to lean on Zeke. I, I mean, Zeke has been 
terrific this year. I don't see why that changes tomorrow night. Like I, I like I said earlier, this is going to be a showcase of two of the best running backs in the NFL. Uh, rushing yards wise, Zeke has only had three games where he surpassed 73 and a half rushing yards. Only three games. Um, but this is a Minnesota Vikings defense that you can gash them a little bit uh, on the ground. They're not one of the better uh, run-stopping defenses. Moreover, what I said earlier, talking about the injuries, Michael Pierce, their stop-gap defensive tackle, he is not going to play. Big loss along the defensive front for the Minnesota Vikings, which should help Ezekiel Elliott's cause. Now, um, Ezekiel Elliott against the Minnesota Vikings now. Where are we? Let's go to historical totals in my research. And Ezekiel Elliott against Minnesota played three career games. In two out of three career games against Minnesota, he's had 86-plus yards. One of those games last season, 21 for a buck oh three, and then he had two receptions for 11 yards and a touchdown. That was a game without Dak. And the Dallas Cowboys won a shootout 31-28. to So Dallas actually beat the Vikings already last season when this team was terrible without Dak Prescott, which makes me buy into my team. Cowboys that much more. Yes, they are my Cowboys. I am a Cowboys fan. I'm not being a homer here. You cannot be a homer when you're wagering on sports betting or wagering on fantasy sports. The biggest mistake you can make. Um, but yeah, you know, Ezekiel Elliott, they're, they're going to lean on him. Uh, Ezekiel Elliott in three games against Minnesota. He's had north of 20 carries as well. So I like Zeke to go over 73 and a half, and that's at points bet. That's the lowest uh, mark. Uh, if you want to get a little bit more bullish and trying to get better odds, like, okay, here, minus 115 odds for 74. I would just go to points bet for the same minus 115 odds for the over and, and get it a yard less at 73 and a half. If you think he can go north of 75 and a half, uh, again, Fox Bet, just like I like for Dalvin Cook's uh, receiving yards, go over to Fox Bet over 75 and a half. Like, why? It's at minus 118. So, really, the play here is the over 73 and a half yards. It doesn't make sense, but that is the way it is. I would smash the over on Zeke's rushing yard total at minus uh, 115. Uh, even Tony Pollard. Tony Pollard has gotten some run, and even though Zeke's playing at a high level, they're using Tony Pollard a lot as well uh, in this offense. Now, Pollard last year, uh, or it was actually two years ago, he had five rushes for 60 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Pollard's rushing yard total, you can get it at 37 and a half and then 38 and a half if you like the over. Points bet again, minus uh, 125 if you like it at 37 and a half. Now you can get better odds at minus 110, which is the best play over at Caesars if you think Pollard goes over 38 and a half uh, rushing yards. Now, what has Pollard, excuse me, what has Pollard done this season? Tony Pollard. Uh, has gone over, like, this is mind-blowing how great this Dallas rushing attack has been. Tony Pollard has gone over 38 and a half rushing yards in each of his past one, two, three, four, five games. So outside of week one, where he did nothing against Tampa and Zeke did nothing against Tampa, Tony Pollard has gone for 41-plus yards in one, two, three, four, five straight games. Like, I don't want to say it's a lock, but it's pretty damn close to a lock that Tony Pollard keeps up his his run of, of rushing yards production um, against the Minnesota Vikings, a team, again, they're, they're without Michael Pierce, and, you know, this isn't a great defense to begin with, so I'm all over the Zeke rushing yard total, the Pollard rushing yard total, uh, the Dalvin Cook receptions, and the Dalvin Cook receiving yards. Now, uh, do we have um, let's let let's do like one or two more before we wrap up, man. I'm really excited for this game. I can't wait for tomorrow night. It's a Halloween game. Maybe some spooky things happen. Like Dak Prescott actually plays through the calf because he's pretty damn durable, as we've seen. Um, 
I'm just checking something out on the Vikings here. Oh, by the way, the Vikings are giving up the 11th most rushing yards to running backs this season at 650. So there's another little nugget on how poorly they play against the run. They're giving up the 11th most rushing yards. They're also giving up the third most rushing touchdowns tied with the um, actually, no, where are the Vikings at? I'm sorry. They're giving up only five rushing touchdowns. I'm wrong there. Uh, but again, the 11th most rushing yards, and it looks like the one, two, three, four, fifth most rushing touchdowns, only five. So I still like those totals for Dallas Cowboys uh, running backs, obviously. Uh, let's see. What other props do I like? Here we go. Kirk Cousins. Um, where are we with Kirk Cousins? Um interceptions now Kirk Cousins we know he's one of the most efficient quarterbacks in the NFL that we cannot deny uh, how efficient Kirk Cousins is so why do I like um, the over on Kirk Cousins interception total the defense that they are playing now Cousins has thrown an interception uh, in two of his past three games obviously didn't throw one against Carolina threw one against Cleveland and Detroit so why am I so bullish on Kirk Cousins interceptions well the team that they are playing the Dallas Cowboys um, they are one of the most opportunistic defenses in the NFL. Uh, they are, in terms of takeaways, the Dallas Cowboys are number two in takeaways with 14. They are number one in interceptions with 11. And they have, uh, you know, only three fumble recoveries. So I'm all over uh, the probability of Trevon Diggs most likely picking off Kirk Cousins tomorrow night. Uh, let's look for picks. Now, your best friend with Odds Jam, besides their tools, Control F. So you could do a, a quick search here. Uh, player interceptions and Kirk Cousins. If you like the over... Because he's so damn efficient and, you know, always have terrific touchdown interception ratios, you can get plus 102 odds at uh, FanDuel if he throws a pick. The odds jam perfect line is minus 102. Really, really terrific odds for Kirk Cousins to throw a pick against the Cowboys in prime time. Let's look at one more prop bet before uh, before I uh, before I call it a day here. Hmm. Let's see. Let's uh let's go to one more. Let's go to Kirk Cousins um passing touchdowns. And why? Because what did I say? The Cowboys are a team that normally plays with the lead. There's a lot of garbage time production, and a lot of that garbage time production comes at the form of passing and passing touchdowns. And really, this Cowboys defense, as great as it is, and as great as they have been playing, a lot of it's the turnovers, a lot of it is the offense, uh, keeping the defense off the field. So they could, this secondary can be had a little bit. Like, as great as Trevon uh, Diggs has been at making plays, you can make plays on him. He's so damn aggressive that he'll bite, and all of a sudden, there's an 80-yard touchdown to Justin Jefferson tomorrow night. Um, so where are we? Touchdowns, touchdowns, pay, uh, player total passing scores, Kirk Cousins. Two and a half is a large number. If you think he goes over two and a half, uh, the pinnacle or the odds jam perfect line plus 172, nothing's really beating that. So then you go to DraftKings at plus 170. I believe Kirk Cousins can throw north of two and a half touchdowns, which means three. Um, in his career, uh, Kirk Cousins has played Dallas a lot, not only in Minnesota the past couple of years, but during his tenure in Washington, uh, Kirk Cousins has had one, two, three games in which he's passed for three touchdowns on the Cowboys. The latest coming in the loss last season, uh, he went for 314 yards and three scores. Also, by the way, Cousins in his career threw two, three, four, five total interceptions against the Dallas Cowboys. Um, so, you know, he has his fair share of picks against them. Uh, he did have a touchdown or three touchdown game last year. I think that can be replicated. Uh, and again, I, I like the odds. This is a, a Cowboys defense. You can beat them up a little bit through the air. Uh, in terms of passing production allowed, the Dallas Cowboys are uh, allowing the 11th most passing yards. They are also giving up 12 touchdowns, which is one, two, three, four, five, sixth most in, sixth 
most in the NFL. You So you can pass a little bit on the Dallas Cowboys. Obviously, Brady lit him up in week one for four. Now, they didn't allow another quarterback to throw for over two touchdowns uh, this season. Darnold totaled four, two passing, two rushing. That wouldn't obviously hit this bet. But Kirk Cousins, he knows the Cowboys. He has two really terrific uh, wide receivers on the outside. K.J. Osborne's a quality three who's an up-and-comer. He can make some big plays. Conklin can make some plays. They have Dalvin Cook, really explosive receiver out of the backfield. Uh, the safer bet, obviously, is Kirk Cousins to go under minus two. 200 at Fox Benton Caesars. But if you believe this is going to be a shootout uh, like I do, and again, last year without Dak, it was a shootout, and the Cowboys won by three points. Uh, you know, with Dak, it's certainly going to be a shootout. Um, Kirk Cousins is going to have to be slinging it. I like the over. You can get the plus 170 odds over at DraftKings right now. But okay, guys, that's going to do it for today. If you enjoyed this program, please subscribe at whatever outlet you are, pick, you are uh, listening or viewing this at, especially you Odds Jam uh, YouTube viewers. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the alert icon so you can know anytime Odds Jam drops a video that's going to help you become a profitable sports better my name is anthony servino follow me on twitter at the real nfl guru follow the show at odds jam i'll be back tomorrow morning with final last minute week eight best bets and player props most likely joined by my guy randall k bets on twitter until then i'll see you later have a safe uh halloween eve if you're going out please uh, you know, you know, play it safe, call an Uber, uh, nothing good. Just like my uh, high school football coach said uh, many, many years ago, nothing good happens after midnight. I'm Anthony Servino. I'll see you tomorrow.